Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curies. Today, I am surrounded by an unbelievable collection of firing glasses that is owned by Brother Chuck the Tort, um, who is one of the members of Masonic Curies. Uh, I want to briefly talk to you about firing glasses. I did mention it in one of the past episodes uh, when I talked about the Masonic Trivet uh, that the firing glasses and I was, uh, Brother Hudson was nice enough to write in and say, well, we still call them firing glasses. Well, again, jurisdiction versus jurisdiction, <coughs> things are called differently. Uh, where I'm from in Massachusetts, we call the glasses that we use at our table lodges, table lodge glasses. During the ritual, they are known as cans. But these pieces in front of you, which we will have a number of photographs that we will share once this video is put on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, um, are called firing glasses. Now, Chuck, unfortunately, uh, hurt his elbow, so he's not able to be with us today, but he's given us the chance of showing off his beautiful collection, of which I must say, I have never seen Another collection like this in my entire life that is owned by one person, except it be in a museum, uh, such as a Grand Lodge Museum or a real museum. And these are beautiful pieces. Uh, there are some newer ones here, and there are some older ones here. Um, as Chuck told me to be very careful with this ruby one because it comes in three pieces, which he didn't tell me when I picked it up. But hopefully it will not come three pieces, otherwise I just bought a beautiful bohemian uh, firing glass. Now, these date to all types of different periods, um, late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, I shouldn't go as 1860s, and there are some newer ones like the Eastern Star, one that is here. Uh, they are still made today. There are a number of companies that do reproduce these. Matter of fact, our good brother, Patrick Craddock from uh, Craftsman's Apron, Craftsman Apron uh, also sells these on his site. Uh, there are a number of great write-ups that you can Google your own self and look them up. They talk all about the history of the firing glass. Um, these are actually the use of the firing glass in Masonic times actually stemmed from military use. Uh, when certain individuals in the military would do toasts, uh, they would have certain glasses and pound them on the table. We as Freemasons sort of adopted that during the colonial periods when our ancient brethren uh, both ate, drank, and did degree work in a tavern or other uh, meeting places. Uh, this I know as a fact because I have seen a number of uh, secretaries minutes uh, once they did meet in a tavern the certain pages are stained with wine dots uh, on those pages indicating that the secretary was drinking probably a little too much uh, while he was taking the minutes and has spilt wine on those pages. So we do know that these existed. How they got into the hands of the brethren, we do not know. Um, I presume most of them were purchased by the member himself. But I have read, and unfortunately I'm extremely bad at doing earmarks. I do not remember where I saw, uh, where I read this, but I did remember seeing a very early Masonic Lodge had written in their uh, records that they had purchased a box of firing glasses for the use of the lodge. So perhaps a lodge may have purchased an entire uh, set of glasses for the use of the brethren during these periods. Uh, now there's all different types. These are usually done in lead crystal. They usually have a heavy base of which I am not going to bang. Uh, they are very, very expensive. Uh, I was able to purchase one which uh, Chuck was kind enough to allow me to uh, use today. Uh, this I gave Chuck to his collection. 
they are beautiful pieces. They're all hand wheeled, engraved. Uh, you'll find the skull and bones. You'll find King Solomon's temple. You'll find arches. You'll find the square and compasses and in numerous different forms uh, with or without the letter G. You'll find the five star of David, uh, the five points, uh, the five pointed star of David. You'll find uh, the sun, you find the moon, you find the stars, you find numerous working tools, both English and American. You'll find, like such in this glass, uh, the cable toe that is on the top. So they came in numerous different shapes, styles, uh, different bottoms. Uh, this one here has more of a jagged edge to a uh, diamond tip to it, as this one here has more of a rounded tip to it, as this one here is more of a cut glass. Uh, a number of them did come from uh, Bohemia, which is a uh, part of a uh, German uh, area uh, in which they did magnificent work on the fine glasses. Um, I have seen them in the red. I have seen some rare ones in the blue and also in the amber as well. And Chuck threw in this pink one, which I have never seen before. And he told me, Keith, make sure you tell them that this came from or was on the UK version of the Antique Roadshow. So we have sort of a celebrity firing glass right here. And this one here, I've never seen one before, but hopefully Chuck will have photographs that we can put on the channel. Actually has three small dice on the bottom of the glass. Never seen one of those before. So we call these cannons. Now why do we call these cannons? Well, I referred to my Grand Lodge expert here who said if I said the ritual in a certain different way that it is permitted that I could do something today to sort of show you non-Masons of what fine glasses were used for. Now, as I had said, they are called cannons. And I also said that they came from the, uh, the basically have a military background to them. So, during the table lodge that we have today, which actually came here in America in 1955, and it was in French, actually came in 53, one of the brethren uh, from who brought it over from France, was a member of Major General, General Henry Knox Lodge of Boston. It took him a couple of years to translate it from French into English, and then to get permission from our Grand Lodge to to do it has a very military overtone to the entire degree. And it's done in a tiled lodge today in Massachusetts. And you find a number of these table lodges conducted throughout the United States. The actual ceremony hasn't taken place here in America for well over a century. And in 1955, uh, the lodge was able to do the first table lodge in Boston, Massachusetts, using the new ritual that we use today. And we pound these glasses on the table to simulate the sound of cannon fire. And I will simulate that in just a second. And hopefully I won't damage any of these glasses when I pound the table lodge glass. Now, I will also have a picture of what table lodge glasses look like today. As you can see, I wish I lived this era to this head because I would have loved to have gone home stinking drunk from a sonic meeting drinking from this and in those days they might have had not seven toasts that we have today in this little glass but they could have had 27 toasts there was no regulation on how many <clears throat> so today we have these little glasses and they're placed on the table in front of the individual and the master will say something like Brother Warden will charge in line the arms for the first toast I'm about to propose. And a warden steward will come by and fill it. I'm using Gatorade, not wine, to fill the glass to a certain point. Today it is by our regulations to Massachusetts, one ounce of wine, one ounce of red wine, white wine, or grape juice may be used. 
And then the brethren will stand uh, after the master asks if the wardens uh, are the canons charged and aligned, and they re reply whatever. And then he will say, right hand to arms, ready, aim, fire. Good fire, fire off. And then you pound the glass onto the table. Therefore, sounding like a cannon. When you have 60 brethren all doing this at the same time on a wooden table with a heavy bottom glass, yes, it sounds like a cannon has gone off. So with that, I can't thank Chuck enough uh, for the opportunity of showing these pieces off. Uh, they are absolutely magnificent. You can find these on various uh, auction sites. Um, and as I said, there are reproductions that are made. I cannot tell myself a reproduction from an original. I don't know if Chuck can. Uh, excuse me, I know Brother Patrick Craddock and I have spoken about this in the past, about the reproductions, and he knows of a number of them that have been reproduced. But even if you get a reproduction today, they are wonderful pieces of our past history. Uh, they're beautiful pieces of, I consider, artwork because of the workmanship that goes into them. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can do some other piece at some other time on them because there's just so many glasses here with so much detail work that is just mind-blowing. So with that, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Remember the likes button. Uh, watch, follow us on Facebook. And... Continue watching. Thank you.